In this video, we're going to talk about replacing a valve cover gasket. We'll be using our 2007 Eclipse for this process. We're going to start this process by removing the components in order to take off the valve cover gasket. When I get to this point, I'm going to remove my valve covers. Sometimes they'll come off really easy like this one does where it's free. If it's a bit stuck, it's best to find a place somewhere where I can get a little bit of leverage to try to pull. In some cases, I'm going to have to use a gasket scraper or another very thin tool to go between the valve cover and the cylinder head to separate the seal and the bond between the gasket and the cover. I've got to be careful of that. If it's a machine surface, that's a sealing surface like where those two flanges come together. If I gouge that, I could create damage that's going to cause a leak. Now that I've got the cover off, I can go about replacing the seals and the gaskets that came with this set. So this one has got just a basic gasket that goes around the perimeter. I'm gonna to wanna to pull that out and get rid of that. The other thing that this model has is that the spark plug tube seals are separate from the valve cover gasket itself. So I'm gonna to have to go back to the cylinder head, pull those off, and then install the new ones that came with this set. Now that I've got spark plug tube seals on, I also want to inspect my seal surface on the cylinder head and make sure that it's clean and free of debris. If it needs some work, I could use something like a little bit of brake clean on a shop rag or even some scotch Brite in order to clean this up. I also want to take a look at the valve cover and determine whether or not I need to clean this. Generally, I want to take this whole thing to the solvent tank and clean it inside and out before I do a reinstallation. You can see that this one's quite clean, so we're going to carry on. I'm gonna to start to lay out my new gasket and just kind of lay it on top and make sure that I've got it going the right way before I press it in. This particular one has got somewhat of a locator tab right here that helps me see which way this needs to go. This particular valve cover does not need any kind of sealant. We brought this out just in case we needed it. Sometimes there'll be a hump or a, a corner where this meets a cam cap or something of that nature. When we get to those corners, we generally want to put a bead of sealant or a dab of sealant in that corner. This one does not need that. We're going to install this dry. Remember when you install a valve cover gasket like this, always make sure that it seats down fully and that it does not rock. Also take a quick look around and inspect and make sure that the gasket stayed in the cover and that it didn't fall out or roll over. That's going to create vacuum leaks and oil leaks that will cause big problems. Remember to always start all of your bolts by hand and keep them loose before you go about tightening any of them. So I've got my torque wrench set to 31 inch pounds. We're going to go ahead and start in the center and work our way out. So I started in the center, did both centers. I'm going to move to this top left corner, go to the top right corner, bottom right, and then bottom left. And I'm going to come back and check in the same sequence. A side note I want to point out is that with a job like this that has a handful of different fasteners and things, it's important to stay organized and keep track. So I do my best to keep my tools laid out, do piles of fasteners. These were my ignition coils and then these were some of the air box components. I've then set my ignition coils up on the cowl to keep them separated. And this bolt that helped with a wire harness bracket lived between cylinders one and two and so I've got it sitting there between coils one and two. That's our process for replacing a valve cover gasket. It's really critical that we keep track of all our tools and all our bolts in this process, because if one of those were to fall in the engine, it would create pretty catastrophic damage. We also wanna pay attention to fastener size and fastener torque. All the fasteners on this valve cover were only M6 or six millimeter fasteners. These don't take a lot of torque and it's very easy to strip them, so keep that in mind. Once you've got the valve cover back on, we'd wanna run the car, verify we don't have any leaks, before we put it back in the service. 